What about direct injection? I've, I've been approached by many people asking um, if we had an interest in getting involved in a trial uh, where you would be directly injecting various substances, other viruses mm -hmm. or TLR agonists. Uh, mm -hmm. Have you well, heard much about those? Yes, I think it's an interesting approach uh, and that might initiate a response at one place that would after be uh, more diffuse. And um, I think we should, and uh, you know, we have this TLR uh, agonist also that uh, has been presented at the ASCO, it was last year, and it was quite uh, interesting, although very preliminary. So let's not shut ourselves to anything that could uh, help and, us. And PV10, the uh, Provector stuff is going to phase three, uh, mm -hmm. or was, I think the first patient is already in, so there is, at least six injectable agents which mm. are brought to phase two and three now. So there's a lot of room for this, you know. The problem is maybe that uh, that not every medical oncologist is willing to, to uh, invest so much time for the technical equipment because you need to inject it uh, under ultrasound guidance into lymph nodes and, and subcutaneous metastases. So that's a question of logistics and not everybody who is a conservative physician, which means not operating every day, you know, is treating patients intralesionally. So it's for the so-called surgical oncologists in the United States, that's an issue, but we don't have these sort of surgical oncologists in Germany. So it's done by us as dermato oncologists. So it's a lo logistic question yeah. for intralesional well, agents. What really convinced me is that you see clear systemic effects of the local uh, injection. And this is also in the, in the phase one uh, B with TVEC Pembro combination. There is a phase where you just use TVEC and you see a, uh, an activation in, in peripheral blood and you see also that non-injected lesions are more infiltrated, though this is documented, and have a, a, a dominant interfering gamma signal, signal in the lesions. And, and this shows that uh, interlesional therapy is different to systemic therapy. And you can make a hot or a cold tumor into a hot tumor, it sounds yes. like, even at a distance, which is why I assume people are pursuing these strategies. But, but lastly, in thinking about trials, there have been data presented with a novel targeted combination. So, Reinhard, can you tell us about the Columbus study? Yes, uh, this is an investigation, a, a clinical trial that is focusing on encorafenib-binimetinib. These are two new uh, targeted agents. Encorafenib is a BRAF inhibitor. Uh, it has, uh, I would really call it a second generation because it is a very sticky molecule and has a long dissociation time. This means it binds to the catalytic domain of BRAF and stays there for hours, 20 hours. So this is five to ten times longer than conventional BRAF inhibitor. So you get a very profound inhibition of BRAF and this is combined with, with binimetinib which is an, uh, an allosteric inhibitor of MEK1-2. And actually, with this combination, you can dose uh, encorafenib quite high, 450 milligrams, and uh, together with binimetinib. And this was compared to a conventional BRAF inhibitor, vimorafenib, and encorafenib monotherapy, and a lower dose of the BRAF inhibitor and the MEK inhibitor, so 300 milligram encorafenib instead of 450. And what we see uh, in summary in, in this very complex clinical trial, we can say there is an increase in PFS uh, uh, with Selboraf, uh, uh, Vimorafenib uh, mono, having the lowest, so seven months, whereas it was nine months, uh, Incorafenib, 12 uh, Incorafenib low dose plus Bini and 14.9 uh, for the highest combination. And this is very interesting because it shows that the harder you hit the pathway, the, the better the result. And this is demonstrated for PFS, but also for response duration. So I think this gives new uh, uh, insight in, in the potential of uh, BRAF MEC uh, strategies. Yeah, and I think a lot of us thought that exactly what you said, that if you would only be able to increase the dose and do a better job of blocking the catalytic domain and then having a slower off rate, you'd probably have a better drug. So this, this combination may now give us a third option for treating uh, BRAF mutated patients.